when I did the 12 empowerments, I really believed that I needed to not experience boredom, to not experience emptiness and pointlessness. Um, these are the things I needed to get rid of in order to be able to recognize who I was. Whereas the fact of the matter is that everything is inseparable from this great bliss and openness. And so this is what Candice Rinpoche said in the talk. Another thing that's great about the training that you could say is a downside is I just lose my train of thought all the time. So, and that's just happened. It's like just the, with the dust balls rolling in my mind. Um, so what happened to me with, in particular with depression was, and I can still remember just sitting there after the 12 empowerments feeling so depressed and all of a sudden realizing that depression was infinite and open and empty of anything other than complete bliss. Didn't change, it was depression. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. So in this talk she said, we just label the, the energy of, of who we are, the basis of who we are as suffering. And we do it because everyone else is doing it and we have many ways of describing suffering. You know, I'm too hot, I'm suffering, I'm depressed, I'm suffering, I'm too old, I'm suffering, I'm overweight. Yeah, I'm overweight, therefore I can't get a girlfriend, therefore I need to not eat pizza, then I can get a girlfriend, then I won't be suffering. Just a relentless, very, very complicated hamster wheel of, of a, a very small selection of descriptions that I needed to try and sort out all of the time. I can still remember, I wake up every morning, I lived in India for five years, that's when I, I met the training in Rishikesh, and I'd wake up in the morning and, and, and I'd go, okay, I'm definitely going to go for a run. You know, like, 6 a.m., oh God, you know, like, okay, I'm going to go back to sleep and I will definitely go for a run in the evening. Come to the evening and I'd be out at the restaurant with my friends and it would be like, oh, I don't want to have pizza, I shouldn't be eating anything, but I'm going to have pizza and I'm going to have banoffee pie because I'm definitely going to go for a run tomorrow morning and then I'll definitely lose weight and then I'll definitely be able to get a girlfriend. And you know, like, just relentless, relentless, exhausting descriptions. So when I did the 12 empowerments, rather than having to sort any of this out, I was given the tools to clearly see how all of this can support my recognition of this bliss and openness. So whenever I have uh, thoughts about self-blame and judgment, then instead of following off into the descriptions that I've done for 20, 30, 40 years, I, I use that as an opportunity just to relax and touch in with open intelligence and it's, it's that simple. And I know in the beginning it doesn't, it doesn't feel like much. So the instruction to introduce yourself to the experience of the nature of mind is just to stop thinking, to stop describing. So you can do that right now. Almost immediately, so for me I hear the squeaky fan and I, and I feel sweaty and hot squeaky fan, sweaty and hot, but it's so dynamic it's very easy to get sucked back into the descriptions of, of what's going on, you know, daydreaming and all of this, so whenever you remember just stop and acknowledge your, your, your capacity to recognize this is open intelligence. I like the description of what's looking. What's looking through your eyes right now? If you can identify that or what's listening to these words it's easy to identify that and relax as that, but it, it's not easy to, to hold on to it. You can't even describe it, you can't locate it really. It's, it's, in, it's inside, it's outside, it's nowhere, it's everywhere. As soon as you try to describe it with the intellect, you can't find it. Which is why this, this practice is so, is, is, is so powerful, because we're not talking about intellectual understanding. It's, it's the experiential recognition of your fundamental nature and that doesn't require any intellectual understanding it's obvious now it might immediately slip away when you go back into thinking but that you know this is how we've been trained so we, we think we describe you know we can do a little experiment so this side over here you're the lemons okay 
and you're the oranges. So how long, how, how long can you think of a nice ripe lemon in your mind and nothing else on this side? And on this side, oranges, okay? And me and Toby are limes, okay? <laughs> So the lemons, you're not allowed to think of anything other than a lemon. You absolutely can't have an orange or a lime in your, in your mind. And the oranges, you can't think of, of, of a lime or a lemon. And we're perfect because we're balanced view trainers, so we'll just have limes <laughs> and there'll be no problem, okay? So how long is it? So, okay, you ready? Go, f go for it with your particular fruit. So lime, 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 lime. Squeaking fan, okay. I'm done for, the squeaking fan got rid of my lime. So, lemons, oranges. It's not very long before a sensation or, a, or something else disrupts that, that attempt at trying to hold something in place. So, but what we're essentially trying to do when we're, we're trying to modify our experience, our thoughts, emotions, sensations and circumstances, we're trying to change our imaginary oranges into imaginary lemons or into imaginary limes or into a courgette or carrot or whatever it is. What are we actually doing when we're doing that? We're not doing, we're not, we're not doing anything. We're working on, on, on something that has no nature in and of itself. So why is your, your imaginary lemon or orange, why is that less real than your depression or your regret or your hope or fear or competitive nature. It's not. It's just that we've trained ourselves to, to categorize our experience and our data into something that's important. So what's important is intimate relationships, money in my bank. What's not important is my imaginary line or what color underpants am I wearing? Am I wearing underpants? <laughs> Something for you to ponder and rest and rest with. <laughs> now I, I know I know I know I'm I'm wearing dark blue underpants, and um, now just imagine if today, in today's open meeting we announced that there was a twenty thousand dollar prize if you were wearing purple underpants. Now all of a sudden the the, the color of underpants is crucially important. <laughs> It's like, oh my God, no, I'm wearing my, my pink underpants with lime spots today. Why didn't I wear my purple underpants? I'd get $20,000. So it's something you don't, you don't think about. So all day long this is happening. It's something we don't think about all of a sudden becomes crucially important. And something that was crucially important is less so. So this is the nature of what we call reification, indulging in thoughts and emotions and trying to change them into a set of thoughts and emotions and experiences that we think are better and then we won't have so much suffering but basically are you still thinking of your your lemon are you still thinking of your orange no and no, it's gone so lime my lime is back <laughs> but but why why can't you for example take your beautiful ripe imaginary orange out of your mind and juice it and have some nice refreshing orange juice. So you, you would say that that's a ridiculous question, but why, why is your depression somehow something that has to be dealt with or is real? So you don't really need to think about these things, but the beauty of this training is that everything you experience, so the th especially the things you don't like, this is what you're looking for. This is evidence of your natural perfection. This is, is evidence of your enlightenment. And we have many beautiful metaphors in this training to, to describe that. And you've, you've all heard them, but they're beautiful. They're very poetic, like the data, your, your imaginary orange, your imaginary lemon, my imaginary lime, and open intelligence is inseparable like the sky and the color blue. They're an inseparable expanse, like reflections in a mirror inseparable. So if you're trying to rearrange your dream, for example, you're basically trying to rearrange the reflections in a mirror and all the while the, the only thing that's there is the mirror.
Now my experience of waking, dreaming and sleeping is that I recognise open intelligence in my dreams, even when it's not a lucid dream. Candice Rinpoche comes to my dreams all, all of the time, and it's not very profound, she's just there, probably making sure that I don't misbehave, even in my dreams. But I actually ha have had some very, very profound dreams, and lucid dreams, and I actually had a dream that wasn't a lucid dream, this is crazy, check this one out. I had a dream that I was having a lucid dream. Well, it wasn't a lucid dream, I was dreaming that I was having a lucid dream. And in my lucid dream, I was waking up, falling asleep, dreaming, dying, being born. It was a dream that I was having a lucid dream. It wasn't a lucid dream. And I woke up like, oh my God. I mean, it was like, it was, it was very profound, but it wasn't a lucid dream. And I'd spent days trying to work out, how can I dream that I'm having a lucid dream and it not be a lucid dream? much easier just to relax and just enjoy what's going on. So this is very important to recognize. I would say my, my primary experience is just enjoyment of everything. And just to clarify, um, suffering isn't the desire for experience. Being is the desire for experience. So, so th th there's a, a difference there. Being is the desire for experience. And so this is the world of reification. We're basically pretending to suffer. You know when little children hide with their face in the, in the corner of a room and they think they're hidden? That's what we're doing. It's like we're, we're just, oh, it's, it's so, so much fun. I'm suffering, I'm miserable. It's open intelligence is waiting to give you a big tickle and, you know, everything's fine. But essentially, this is the nature of reality. And thanks, thanks to Candice and this m incredible, incredible, magical, yeah, it's just, it's just pure enjoyment all the time.